Good evening, everyone. I'm just delighted to see the turnout tonight. You've made my night. Thank you very much for coming. It's something that I heard repeatedly on the campaign trail and in my years of business in the city. And uh, I'm delighted to see that Victoria really does want to look at solutions for working together more effectively and perhaps discovering some common approaches. Um, this is a volunteer committee that sort of I'm, been, I'm honored to be a part of and uh, they'll be introduced in a moment. But more importantly, I want to uh, pass the mic over to Murray Langan, who has graciously offered to MC the event and help moderate. It is a conversation style event and he is going to uh, um, get us going. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for coming and I think we have the wealth of knowledge in this room that will help us find solutions to working together more successfully as a region. Thank you. It's very encouraging to see the turnout. I know there's a lot of things that could people could be doing tonight, watching the Canucks or uh, watching TV, listening to the radio. Uh, it's equally encouraging not only to see the representation that you see here uh, with this committee, and I'll introduce them in just a second, but it is also heartening to see uh, members of the media here, conventional and social media as well, to talk about this. Uh, I, quite frankly, am not surprised to see these tables full. In fact, I think the next time that this happens, the second conversation on this, we'll need a bigger venue. And for those who think that there isn't interest in this topic, and, and the whole nature of this meeting is not to come up with an answer tonight, or say this is what we have to do, I think this is just a collection of people who clearly care about their community, that have investments in it, and hope to see it act and perform in the very best. And so when we come together with an open mind and say, before we get to the answer, let's start looking at the questions. What do we have now? What do we like? What would we do differently? I think asking those questions is very important. And that will also prevent any organization, anyone from racing off and saying, you know what, there's only one answer to this situation that we see. Uh, along with Victoria City Councilor Shelley Goodgen, I am also heartened to see a couple other municipal representatives, Chris Coleman and Jeff Young from uh, the City of Victoria. Nice to see you folks as well. Uh, so I want to introduce uh, the, the format here, but first maybe I'll, I'll go with the committee. Uh, Matt Wright to the far right. Give away Matt. <laughs> the, the spectacle chap is Rob Phillips. <laughs> the gal adorned in red is Susan Jones. Uh, Shirley Gunton as well, you know her. And Tamara Hernandez, correct? Uh, we've got a fantastic little slice of history to share with you and how we got to this point, uh, prepared for, or by us, actually, by Bernard von Schulman, who's here tonight, um, who is uh, an, an encyclopedia of information, especially taking a look at where we've got to now. So the style of the meeting. Has anyone ever been at one of these world cafes or a meeting like this before? Raise your hands if you have. Super, okay, we've got some expertise. First and foremost, as you look around at your table, what we'll need each table to do is to appoint, elect, or choose a host. It's not someone who controls the table, but it's someone who basically helps guide each table because we're going to be dealing with a couple of questions. And the, from those questions, each of us at a table is going to participate to try and come up with answers, and they'll vary. So in the next couple of minutes, if every, every table could pick a host or someone who's going to be the ambassador for that table, that would be great. So the whole nature of the idea with your creative supplies and paper and colors and pens is to be a free format idea generator. So while this may seem unconventional for those talking about such heady things as civic governance, uh, it's really kind of a fun and creative way. You can draw maps, designs, you do whatever. I'll be very interested to see a great collage of what people envision and uh, what this region should look like by the end of the night. Um, the history. As someone who's involved in local media and someone who sincerely loves talking about this issue and asking, can we do better? Uh, I, was, I was fascinated to read uh, Mr. Von Schulman's slice of history on how we got to the 13 municipalities. So as you may know, the city of Victoria is set to celebrate 150 years. Uh, the first and only incorporation passed through the legislature of Vancouver Island. So next, the second municipality to incorporate 
course, you may remember some of the centennials. Uh, Sydney in 1905, which also included North Saanich as well. Now, apparently given the time it took to travel between up there and down here, that may have made sense. Of course, the people of Oak Bay and Saanich saw a good thing and said, wow, why don't we become uh, part of the city of Victoria? However, there was concern within the city ranks that that would create a demand for services. So Oak Bay and Saanich were left out. Off they went on their own. And then we saw in 1906, as we just celebrated the centennial not that long ago, Oak Bay and Saanich. So we had four municipalities from 1912 to about 1950. Central Saanich, formerly Ward 6 of Saanich, succeeded in 1950 to become Central Saanich. Uh, Sydney finally incorporated in 1952 because the population was larger than it was in 1911. North Saanich was not part of Sydney at that time. So shortly after, North Saanich came into existence in 1956. Oddly enough, as a fire prevention district, became a full municipality in 1965. So you have the, the core and the peninsula. From 65 to 84, there were seven municipalities. Then comes the West Shore. And we've seen that evolution most recently. A lot of studies were done. Um, there, was, there was looks at incorporation. So in the 1980s, we saw the first municipalities on the West Shore. Machosan in 1984, Colwood in 1985. In 1988, New Royal was formed out of the lands left over between Squimalt, Sandwich, and Colwood. So I guess there's this little pocket, and we've given it a name. It's an interesting evolution. Langford incorporates in 1992. Um, it had been a sticking point apparently in the incorporation movement. There were at least three votes before 1985 against incorporation and votes against singing, uh, forming, forming a single municipality with Colwood. So Highlands then came in and Souk in December of 99 becomes the last municipality. There's also talk of East Souk. There's also talk of Shirley and Jordan River. So there's quite a cornucopia of styles of governance. That is one of the things that is going to be talked about tonight. So, to talk about exactly what that style of governance looks like, I'm going to bring uh, Mr. Matt right up for the first element of this conversation uh, to talk about what our style of governance looks like. I think he's got a photographic element on this too. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Matt Wright. Thank you very much, Murray. This is where you actually get some slides. We we'll talk about the current situation of our local and regional governments, and as Murray's mentioned, uh, we are at 13 municipalities within Greater Victoria, what we call Greater Victoria. But on top of that, we actually have a regional government. It's the capital regional district, and that's actually larger than most people actually think. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. This is a map of the CRD, and I'm sorry that the uh, graphics are so small. We'll actually uh, put this up on the website, victoriawave.ca, uh, along with all the notes and videos from this evening as well, so you get a greater idea. Uh, but if you look in the bottom sort of uh, right-hand corner of your side, that's, that's Victoria Harbor there, and you can see all these little municipalities around there. But on the left-hand side, you see a huge chunk. That's Juan de Fuga. That's an electoral district. and. CRD also covers all the way up to uh, Salt Spring and the Gulf Islands. So we have our local councillors and CRD directors, which are actually governing a very large area of territory in the South Island. Don't think I need to give the full list of our municipalities, but the electoral regions are quite interesting because, like I said, they are one of you got Southern Gulf Islands and Salt Spring Island. And the CRD actually acts as their local government. They don't uh, elect mayors or uh, municipal councillors. They, they elect CRD directors to handle all their services and governance. And this is the mandate, and I'm uh, glad to see uh, Councillor uh, Jeff Young here, because he's also the chair of the Capital Regional District. So if I get anything wrong tonight, I'm sure I'm going to get uh, uh, a word from him. But this is actually from the website. Uh, the CRD furthers the interests of its members through providing region-wide services, creating partnerships, and, and acting as local government in the electoral areas. And I just want to emphasize that. It's providing region-wide services, but also creating partnerships. There are two pieces of legislation. 
that govern us. The BC Local Government Act, which is essentially the piece of legislation, the rules and regulations which are behind the Capital Regional District, and the Community Charter, which provides the governance structure for our actual municipalities. And the mission statements of both of each are pretty much the same. We go for the community charter, they have the authority and discretion to address existing and future community needs. And one thing I'd like to note about both these documents, and we will post links to these because they are available on the web, on our website, like I said, it's, it's worthwhile going through them simply because the amount of flexibility that every municipality has to create their own bylaws, their own governance structures, is quite amazing. So what can happen in Obey, for instance, may not be happening in Sandwich and vice versa. Now the services that the CRD actually operate currently, and these are just a few of them, regional parks, regional planning, planning on a, on a greater uh, area, waste management, recycling, we all know the blue box trucks that go around, and 911 services. They can also manage inter-municipality services. So for instance, if uh, Colwood and Machosen came together and said, we want to bring our park services together and have one operation for that, they could actually apply to the uh, CRD and say, we'd like you to manage that one. And as noted before, the uh, CRD also provides local government to the electoral areas. And it's a 23 member board. Most people are both municipal councillors and CRD directors. Um, quick question, how many voted in the last November election? Just about everybody here, I'm not surprised actually. <laughs> was anybody confused when you went up uh, to the ballot and said, uh, and there was vote for a councillor and vote for a CRD director? Did you actually know what that meant? Was there, most people did, that's good. Because that's one of the questions that I've got even from my neighbours. They don't really know what a CRD director does. I'm glad everybody else here does. CRD can authorize alternative approval processes or, or referendums, and that's mainly for borrowing money. And they also operate a number of boards, like the Hospital Board, Arts Committee, Liquid Waste Management, CREST, which is a region-wide uh, emergency communication system, transportation and water supply. Well, they're on the hospital. They're elected to it. Right. Yeah. No, no, but if the hospital board actually deals with, you're absolutely correct, with capital funding, yeah. For our municipal governments, we elect every three years uh, a mayor and eight councillors, two, three-year terms. They are responsible for services within their municipality that are not covered by a different authority. They can, like I said, create intermunicipal services. That's a form of service amalgamation, if you want to look at it that way. They can each municipality enact bylaws which can change or alter the function of how their council operates as long as it's within the parameters of the community charter, how they run their municipal operations, and how they run their planning. And like I said, there are some major differences between how various municipalities in this region run their own operations. And they fund their operations, of course, through residential business taxes, license fees, and uh, we often get them parking fines. They can, on their own, of course, borrow funds, and they work in partnership, just like the capital region does, with upper and upper levels of government. But there's more authorities around Greater Victoria as well that some people are not really aware of. And this is by no means a complete list. You have the Greater Victoria Harbour Authority, an airport authority, we have police boards, we have a provincial capital commission, we have school boards, library boards, tourism boards, and neighborhood associations. So there's all kinds of different levels of governance uh, within Greater Victoria, and they all have to work together in some way, shape, or form to make things happen in a functional and efficient way. And that's what we're gonna be discussing here tonight. Do we have the right structure? Are there things that are working well that shouldn't change? Are there things that are not working so well that maybe we should have a look at? And are there answers to those problems? 
and we're hoping to utilize your talent, your brains, uh, to come up with maybe some solutions. And after this tonight, what we're going to do is collate all the information that comes out of this. We have a video station, we have uh, people tweeting online, we'll have some uh, all your notes, and we'll be putting it up on the website victoriawave.com. Please feel free to, if you're on Twitter, how many people are on Twitter? Oh, there's quite a few, that's great. Wow. Uh, you can use the hashtag YYJGOV, and we have a Facebook page, Amalgamation Victoria. Uh, and just a quick note, because I know the word amalgamation has got uh, a lot of resonance, and some people have got very set of ideas about it. Uh, it's actually a little bit of an apology from us. We couldn't come up with another word that sort of encompassed everything. Amalgamation can mean many different things. It could be amalgamation of services, it could be municipalities coming together. Uh, so we don't want to prejudge any of your thoughts about this tonight. So thank you very much. And I'll be passing this now off to Marie. Thank you very much, Matt. One of the things that's very clear about the Capital Region is just the incredible amount of talent and, and intellectual foresight we seem to have here. This is a gifted region. I know there's shocking amounts of uh, educated people here uh, from a diverse set of backgrounds, some domestic, some imported from other areas of Canada or from around the world. Uh, I'm amazed when I moved here 15 years ago just how much I didn't know about the city, and it's been a very steep learning curve. For those who weren't born and raised here, it seems somewhat different, and I think it is somewhat different, but uh, I've been truly impressed by people exactly like you, who are motivated, who are plugged in, um, who are very intelligent about what their community is and what their community means. So uh, again, this promises to be a learning uh, opportunity as well. If I can get Robin Tamara to come on up here, I think what we'd like to do is, is start getting busy and start asking these questions so we can start coming up with the next part of the step. Sure. Thank you so much. Can you all hear me? Great. First of all, thank you so much. I have been very heartwarmed to see how many people care about our community to come out on a Tuesday night in the cold to, to, to talk about it. So that's huge. I feel like we're back in the era of the town hall and people actually showed up. Uh, the second thing is, is there anyone who is not currently sitting at a table? Because we need you all to be conversing with one another. Yeah, could I get you, whoever has got a chair but not a table, there is one free chair here, but uh, there's one free chair here. Please come up and join. Other than those two free chairs, it's time to bring in your chair and join a table. Thank you. seat uh, just to let you know that it's the end of the third period and Nashville and Vancouver are tied at three. <laughs> sort of put it down wrong things. You can turn around, come on. Okay, so um, before we start the conversations, I just want to draw your attention to a couple of things. Number one, every one of you who came in here tonight received a, a puzzle piece, which is what directed you to your table. That is to symbolize that every single one of us brings with us knowledge. We bring a vital piece of the overall picture, of the solutions that we can create. A conversation cafe is to honor that knowledge. And so while some of you may have come thinking, no, no, I'm just here to listen, or no, no, I just want to see you know, what other people have to say, this is for you to recognize that your experience is, is vital and it needs to be heard. So that's part of what that puzzle piece represents. On the flip side, it also represents that nobody has the whole picture. So that's also perspective and humility 
that we need to bring to the table. The format that we're using tonight is called Conversation Cafe. It has been practiced all around the world. It's an approach to social change which begins with engaging people in questions that really matter. One of the first things we need to think about is what are the questions that really matter? And I think that's what we in our group have really grappled with. Our group itself does not have a one single viewpoint. Not one of us really says, oh, we're all gonna go in this direction. The group itself has been incredibly diverse and we've had quite an experience coming to the table and, and being able to talk over a period that started in December, yeah? yeah? And we've had you know meetings and emails and meetings and we've had to really learn how to work together. And so in a way, we begin to see ourselves as a model for how as a city we need to learn to work together despite the fact that we have diverse viewpoints. Having said that, at your table, you will find you have diverse viewpoints. That is something to be embraced. That is something to be honored. There is what we're looking for is what transcends the conflict or the, or the, the thing that seems like you don't agree. You'll find if you go to the deeper question, you'll find that you have agreement on the deep needs, the needs for living in, in a, a clean environment, living in a safe place, living in a place that we can hand to our kids. These are things I think we all can agree we hold in common. How we get there, the strategies that we choose, we all may have different ideas. So whenever we, when we come to a place in a conversation cafe that we, we feel a little bit of an impasse at the table, we kick back to the larger question and the place that we can all agree on, and then we move forward again. The way we're gonna structure it tonight is basically there's so many of you that we didn't anticipate that there would be a need for that many facilitators. So pretty much, you're on your own. <laughs> Having said that, we'll do our best. If anybody has an actual question or impasse, please put their hand up, and one of the, one of the members of the group will come over and try to show you what it was we did to get past our impasses when we had them. Uh, we have a structure, but before I just tell you how that structure is gonna work, I wanna let you know that all along the sides of this uh, space are little interaction stations. You had one when you first came in, it uh, said, where did you come from? Worth taking a look, so we'll get a sense of what kind of representation we actually have in here tonight, geographically speaking. But there's other areas. There's a sign up at the end of this whole uh, public engagement conversation time. There is going to be a place where you can uh, talk at the mic, just like I'm doing. I'll get off in a second. Uh, and you can have your views known. There is also a station where you can go and make a two minute video. So please feel free to visit that station after the conversation period is over. There's the wall of inquiry. Questions that have come up, please post them on the walls, that's what we need. And the other section is, yeah, make sure you send your tweets and, and meet your fellow tweet ups over there. I saw quite a few of you on Twitter. Oh, anonymous comments. Some of you might wanna say a few things and you don't want people knowing what you said or who you were, so we have a box with a lid where you can discreetly slip your comment in and walk away. Everything will be collated. Uh, the, 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 we are honoring that we will gather all the information tonight and ensure that it is available for you to, to interact with. It will be available on the, I, what is it? What's Victoria it? Wave. Victoriawave.ca. I'm sure it'll probably be on Shelly Gudgeon's website as well. Is that true, Shelly? Yeah, she's saying that's true. There will also be paper um, copies of the reports available. Um, how are they going to get those? Any, how are they gonna get those? Call my home number. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work that out. Okay, anybody who thinks they want follow up, you need to leave your, you can put in the anonymous box if you want, but leave your contact information so we know that we're gonna follow up on you, but we're not gonna be like salespeople, okay? Tonight, the conversation cafe is gonna begin with one question. We're going to ask you to talk for 20 minutes. Please do not allow any one person to dominate your table. Though every single person has a role to play, someone may sit quietly, but they do need to be asked, and you'll probably find that they end up being able to concisely say something with sum up everything you've been talking about in a, in a couple of seconds. All those are, are needing to be heard. 
please jot down, doodle, play, we're going to be collecting them later, uh, all of the comments so that we can actually get what you were talking about. Try to take notes as much as you can so that we can gather those for the report later. Anything I'm missing? The question. Are you guys ready for the first question? Yes? Okay, so the first question that we'd like you to discuss is, you've seen a couple of presentations here, and they were talking about how we could work together better. They were talking about how the municipalities have structured, how we got to this place. They gave you some information about how the current governance structures are. Now we need you to, to tell us So we have an idea of what we know. Your question to each of the tables is, what don't we know? What don't we know? Ready and So everybody here now has an understanding of the history and part of some of the legals in terms of how we get to where our next steps are. Uh, this, the question that is posed to each of you, because everybody's brought their own uh, perceptions, is what don't we know in order to make that next step? In order to come together as with better information as to where we're going next, is what don't we know? In other words, what do we need to find out? And go. And again, if any of you feel like you're faltering, put up your hand and we'll come and, and uh, support the table, okay? 20 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, can I grab your attention for just a second? Ladies and gentlemen, sorry to interrupt, we'll make this very brief. Two quick things. So we're done question number one, we have question number two for you. One, there are refreshments, please feel free to satiate yourself. Number two, we would encourage people to move tables and move throughout the room. However, because it sounds like there's a terrific amount of free-flowing conversations, which sounds awesome, if you are happy with your group, if you like your new friends, please feel absolutely free to stay where you are. I see lots of smiles. Okay, one table has already amalgamated. All right, here we go. Okay, so I want everyone to know that there's stuff back there. Again, we've got the boards along the side. Feel free to stretch your legs and move around. I would also encourage you, if you want for just a brief second, to take that little stroll to see what other tables, other communities, your neighbors are doing around you. Because really, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Listening to your neighbors. So again, these are your conversations. If you're happy with your working group, feel free to stay exactly where you are. If you do want to move, there are some open chairs and there are some spaces for you. Are you all ready for question number two? Raise your hand if you're ready for question number two. Rod has got question number two. We are, once we start the 20 minute, 25 minute clock, we will not be speaking in the mic anymore. We will leave you uninterrupted. Are you ready? Here we go. Question number two is a two part question. What could we share all by what common approaches can we take? You want me to repeat it? What could we share? What common approaches can we take? We'll see in a bit. Please make sure that when you're writing your comments down, that you all have access. It's not one secretary, it's not old format, it's not Robert's Rules of Order. So there's lots of paper. If anybody needs more paper, please put your hand up. There's no shortage of paper and pens. Remember that when we come back to collate this information, we're going to need to understand what you wrote. So please make sure that we, you know. Thank you. One last thing, while you're wandering around seeing the different stations, at the very front is a box on the table when you first came in to get your puzzle piece. 
If you would like us to contact you, please do put your contact information there. We will not share your information with anyone, but we would love to be in contact with you if you'd like us to be here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if I could just get your attention here. Wow, that has been a very healthy 30-minute session. Congratulations on some very vibrant and lively discussions. Yeah, give yourself a hand. All right, now we are coming to the... Oh, by the way, please make sure you've written down as many of your thoughts as possible because these pieces of paper at your table become the living documents for the next conversations. Whatever notes, whatever scrawl, no matter what. At the end, we're also going to uh, give you an, uh, an email address if you want to scan some of your own thoughts or notes or send some feedback in to this committee, they'd love to hear it. Okay, so on to the open mic session. We've got two people signed up. I'm going to come find you wherever you are. Uh, David and Jim will be the first two up. Uh, the floor will be yours. And I'll just wander through the crowd with the microphone and if anyone else wants to say anything, We'll just let it happen. So we've got about 20 minutes for this. Uh, David, where are you? Absolutely. Do you, a, do you don't want to say anything? I've got happy feet. Okay, uh, Jim, where is Jim? Jim, there you are. Stand up, my friend. We'll give the mic to you. Yes, thank, thank you. I'm uh, Jim Jarrett, my just living in this neighborhood. Um, I'd like to say that, first of all, that um, the issue that we're facing with here is not uh, a direct criticism of the, the people that are doing the work that we're doing right now. The problem, the essential problem in my view, is that we have just saddled them with a governance structure that just doesn't work. Uh, we have, we have uh, these various little municipalities and somehow they have to be cobbled together by uh, the CRD board, which uh, unfortunately is not uh, directly accountable because it's not elected and, and it just doesn't have the power to actually uh, ensure that the kind of essential deep things that we need to have done are done. Basically to me it comes down to a, a, a really simple question and the biggest failure our current governance system has given us and that is the, the lack of an effective regional planning tool. Uh, and inseparable from the planning is transportation. Uh, everything else stems from that. And until we can get to that point of having a, having a, a, a governing body that has the authority to, to deal with that, we're just not going to get out of this. And when I talk about planning, I'm not talking about, about rezoning a duplex in South Oak Bay because frankly, I don't really, it doesn't affect me and it doesn't affect most people. But when you look at, at uh, what's going on out in Colwood Corners and uh, construction aggregates, that absolutely affects us in a big, major way. And there's no way that those kind of developments should be uh, permitted just at the, by the, 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 the uh, buyer leave from, from the Colwood Council. This is a really big thing. And unfortunately, we just don't have the tools to deal with that. So I, I hope that, uh, that this is the start of something that will lead us to uh, a better way. Uh, of, of dealing with this. Awesome. Uh, how many tables talked about planning? How many talked about transportation? How many talked about Uptown? Anyone talk about Uptown? <laughs> okay, so when I heard Jim talk about the Colwood Corners, that's the first thing that came to my mind is he's bang on. What about Uptown? And then I heard this question come up. Should we, on the edge of verge of one municipality, have any say or input? We're a block away, but clearly that's got impact. I think that's why Jim's point about Hallwood Corners is actually incredibly salient. Does anyone else have any thoughts as we meander through the crowd? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Karen. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Saul Anderson and uh, I was a candidate in the most recent city council election. I got my record number of votes, which was 1,055, so thanks to some of you maybe who put next to my name. Um, I've, I've, I've been interested in um, regional issues ever since I got involved in politics, I guess, but even before that, 
And then I think the, the main thing, two things I'd like to say. One is thanks all for coming. It was a great conversation over a table number four, and I'm sure everybody else probably feels the same way. Um, but the other thing really to me is that we need to come together in this way, and we need to create a regional plan. We need to harass the province to get funding for important things like regional transportation. We, need to, we, we can't build in global corners until we have a uh, rapid transit link or something, I think, personally. There's just no way that we can carry on like this. So we need to get our act together as a region and, and knock on the those provincial doors that demand the infrastructure development that, that we're seeing in Vancouver receive a disproportionate share of, if you ask me. Uh, the South Island has, is, has a huge and growing population and uh, it's a major strain on our resources and our, our ability to pay uh, here locally. So I, I think we need to uh, make sure that we have a, a clear idea of what we need to accomplish and get on the backs of the province too, and our MLAs especially. And then even federally, there's, there's got to be money for us to uh, develop the kind of um, infrastructure that is necessary, whether it's sewage, whether it's transportation, even harm reduction or affordable housing. All of these things are larger issues that, as municipalities, individual municipalities, especially uh, in this patchwork we have here, that we cannot deal with alone. So thank you for coming, and let's get the ball rolling and keep this, uh, make it stronger so that we can achieve greater things for, uh, for greater Victoria. Good thing I didn't wear just my dancing shoes. So I'm looking good, so I'm feeling good. There you go, my friend. Good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Peter. Uh, I'm a relative newcomer to Victoria. I've been here for a couple of months. Over, um, having come from a much larger municipality on the other side of the Rockies, uh, it, it seems to me that by taking a split
It's just all the politicians say we don't want it, so there's no debate, we don't get any choices. And I think that's the dilemma. How do you take the expression of concern that's in this room and get it out there to all our neighbors and the 400,000 people who live here and give those people a chance to express their viewpoints? That's the dilemma. And I don't, I don't know how we solve that disconnect between your concern and those people who are perfectly happy with the vested, you know, with the vested interests and the status quo. The other thing, though, the other comment I would make is, aside from the planning concern and the deficiencies in the regional planning for transportation and everything else, the other really big issue is the free rider question. We have so many people who live in poor municipalities who benefit from services who don't pay for it. Beacon Hill Park or policing in downtown Victoria. And so you have that issue as well. But I mean, the planning problem, which we know is transportation and water and sewer and all those other issues, transit, the, the, the big issues. But the question is, how do you get this concern out of here so that the ordinary person in the city gets a chance to express their feelings and we find out? Is it 50% of the people or is it 90% of the people in Victoria who want to change? That's the issue, and I, 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 have, I don't have an answer to that. Murray, do you have, because you talk to the politicians. Well, I mean, you can, you can, it is actually a very good question. Um, it starts, I mean, this young woman is here with the media, these two gals are with the media as well, so your concerns aren't being heard. Uh, I've been gathering tape as we went through, so your concerns will be heard. I'll provide an open line format, usually Monday to Friday, to articulate those concerns. Absolutely, if you want to. So we'll continue to do that, but quite frankly, the most encouraging thing I've seen uh, in about 10 years is this. You're, you're, you are, you are the change, you are the format, you are the venue. And I would have to guess that the next time that we do this, we're going to ask that question. We're going to say, and you're going to say, you know what, I was with this really interesting table, a handsome lot it is, very engaged group, and we have this question. Who is listening to us, and when will we get our say? So does that mean, is it time to have a referendum on this? Should we be asking about a plebiscite or the next step? The chair of the CRD is here, municipal representation is here. So they know that you care. They're interested in hearing what you have to say, I would think, very much so. So those people that you did elect and those people that did run for council are just as engaged as you are, and they do care. And even if they're sort of saying, I'm not sure what to make of this, they now know. So I would think, the notion that people can escape this or not recognize that this there is momentum to this question uh, it is changing absolutely i was just going to say i don't think there's ever been a time in the city of victoria where there's been so much passion and uh, the community coming together uh, to uh, push this issue uh, forward i think it really has to be on the ballot of the next municipal election so we can speak broad, loudly as a united, greater community uh, about bringing us together uh, for, uh, for amalgamation. So uh, I think we are all part of history here tonight, myself, and it's going to be very exciting to see this group grow and grow, and uh, we will become a united city. We will have one mayor and one police chief, and we will show the country and the region we know how to run a city. Thank you very much. And so we've got 10 minutes left. By the way, not only are we getting conventional media and not only having the power of word of mouth, and Rod, I'll get to you a second, we also have the social media maven in the corner here, Janai, who's been hammering away at the keyboard. So this is a multiple format, by the way, transmission. A big round of applause for Janai Aragon, who's been pounding away. Uh, I'd just want to
debate. I'm not convinced. I'd like somebody to show me actual proof or a study that will show we will save money, we will have a better business economy, a better reach through our reach. I think it's big and important. I think it's panacea. And I think we have a very well ordered city that works quite well compared to other places. I studied this issue. This has been an issue in this, in this reach for over 100 years. They had a silly thing called the sanatorium they were trying to do many, many years ago. I've lived in Calgary. I love Alberta. Calgary, compared to Victoria, is an ugly city. <laughs> ugly big light standards, big, uh, big thoroughfares, and it's just not a good place to live. You live there because you want to make a living, but you'd rather live in Victoria for, for quality of life. And you have a pretty good quality of life here. If you can prove to me factually, not emotionally, an amalgamation is a good idea, I might buy it. I thought it was pretty crazy about all these municipalities. But the longer I live here, the more I support it. Each area has its own personality, and that's what makes it so much fun to live here. The amalgamations that have occurred in the major cities across Canada, you know what? The taxes there did not go down after the amalgamation. The levels of bureaucracy went up. Things became more complicated, not less. Taxes did not go down. People got less representation. I'm from Victoria, and now there's, what is it, eight aldermen for the whole city? Councilmen? You know what happened in these amalgamated cities? Suddenly there was, you'd have like one per hundred thousand. So there were eight for 80,000, and suddenly there'd be eight for 100,000, right? So it, it's not a win-win. I think Victoria would benefit big time by amalgamation, and I think businesses would benefit. But you know what? Not the residents. They would not benefit. felt the need to or desire to talk to a city councillor or mayor so I don't really feel that I'm underrepresented or overrepresented. Well no I am overrepresented because Toronto has over four million people and they have forty four councillors and mayors for the whole region. And San as Surrey has a half a million people and they have nine. We have 330, 350,000, and we have over 90. I've heard 89, 108. I just, I can't wrap my head around that. That we need that many councillors for such a small city. And really, Victoria, I love it here, but it's a pretty small city for 330,000 people. Surrey is much bigger than we are. And it just seems to me like that's a huge, it just defies my common sense. It just doesn't make sense to me that we need that many councillors. Okay, we have time for three more speakers. I think that it's really important for us to realize that, yes, we may lose in representation or what we see as representation currently um, if we move into a model of amalgamation, but there's nothing to say that that way of representation is the right way or the only way or that we get better representation. I would feel that those of us that are in the room tonight are never going to have an issue getting the representation that we want because we're the kind of people that are going to show up at meetings. The question that we need to ask ourselves, because we're the ones who show up, is how are we going to ensure that everybody gets representation? And maybe, maybe by sharing, that's how we're going to get it and ensure that everybody has a place at the table, not just us. So when you 
can see that evolution, you say, well, we want to keep it that way. We don't want to change it. We want to leave it the way it is because it's worked so well for that length of time. But if you were given the assignment, every table was given the assignment to say, okay, we're going to give you 350,000 people. We want you to set up a government for them. Which table in this room would say, I think what we'll do is we'll have 13 municipalities, we'll have 13 mayors, we'll have 13 fire departments, and they'll be different sizes. We're going to have a town of 10,000 people, Highlands 3,000, Victoria 80,000, and that's going to be the most efficient method that we can use to govern 350,000 people. And we're not going to change because we just think that's going to be the best way to do it. mayors. How many mayors do we have in the room here this evening? We have one. There we go. One person that sees the big picture. Two mayors that see the big picture. And how many aldermen or councillors out of 80, roughly 80, how many do we have? We have one sitting here, a couple, a few more. These people can see the big picture. And those are the type of people that we need to elect the governors. Thank you. We have time for one more speaker, folks. Sorry, we're at four minutes to the hour here. Um, uh, I'll make this quick since you actually covered in some ways what I want to say here. Um, just for myself, uh, an amalgamation for me is something that's important. I've um, been interested in a long time because we govern our region based only on where we sleep, not where we work, not where we actually shop, not where we actually go and do our recreation. I happen to be lucky. I live and work in the same municipality, but that's only because I work out of my own house. <laughs> Otherwise, odds are my, uh, my job would be in a different municipality. I don't shop in the municipality I live in. I don't go to the recreation service in the municipality that I live in. I get no say in the other municipalities on what they do because I don't have to sleep there at night. And that's wrong. It's all my community. It's all where I take place. I should be able to do all four under one council in one community, not have to split it up. I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. By the way, as you have met new friends around your table, please feel free to exchange contact information. I think it'd be great to have these conversations continue even on a micro level as well. So a couple of things. All the papers are going to be collected. Before you leave, if you would like to share your contact information, again, go to the very back table and get yourself plugged in. And then we'll keep this going. There's, there's a brown box there. It's very easy to say where you want to be contacted. Uh, 60 seconds before we go, and before we get everyone standing up and ruffling their coats, I just want to get one last quick word in here from Rob. Uh, I wanted to speak to actually that question about our voice, and everybody's opinion here is a valid opinion, whether you're for amalgamation, not sure, or against, uh, or against amalgamation. The best way you can share your voice and get it out there is by giving us your comments on here. Uh, gentleman over here gave us a great idea that we printed a, uh, an email address called ideawave, or uh, sorry, info at victoriawave.ca. Now if you have a scanner at home, you want to take home your notes right now, take them home, scan them, and then email them, that way we can collect them as well. But this format will be, a, uh, if you share your voice with us, then we'll be able to get that out there through all the various uh, tools that we have. That way, we're not uh, blind or deaf on the table. And one more note to pass along your way, Tamara. Okay, one last thing to tell you. Tonight was a night of symbols as well. We came together, symbolic of a conversation. We sat at our individual tables and had conversations, showing that we were able to come to consensus building, to share, to, to be able to express our experiences. It wasn't symbols because we each had a piece of the puzzle, but none of us had the whole picture. And in that, we were able to honor each other's voices and the experience that we bring to the larger conversation. There are still two more symbols to talk about. On your table, you'll see fresh bouquets of tulips. They each represent the flowering of the conversation and the relationships were built tonight. Please, each one of you, when you go home tonight, bring a tulip with you. On the way out, you will find some little planted pots. In those little planted pots or next to them is soil and seeds. And again, that is symbolic. 
because that tulip, and while it's beautiful tonight, will not last very long. In order to keep this momentum, five people aren't going to be able to do it. We need a large group of people having conversations with their neighbors, engaging at coffee shops, following back on the feedback, commenting back on what they saw happen tonight. That is a sustained effort. Please take home one of those planters, plant a seed, nurture it, watch the seed grow into flowers, and in the same way, the ideas that were planted here, just the seed, will also be able to grow and flourish, regardless of whether it's amalgamation or non-amalgamation. The ideas and the connections is what's gonna take Victoria and all of us forward. Thank you. I'd just like to thank her and Megan for doing such a wonderful job of moderating tonight's event and from us and the committee, enjoy your day. Make sure you put your your name and your contact information. And if you, by the way, I'll extend this to each and every one of you. If you want to continue to have this conversation on the radio, we'll be having lots of opportunities for you to do that on CFAX. So thank you very much for coming out tonight.